Welcome to this series of instructional videos using Hydrocurl Artists paint products. Hydrocurl is an Australian manufacturer of colour and mediums with over 30 years experience in the marketplace. My name is Donna Richardson Hyde and I've been testing, mixing and using the Hydrocurl range of paints and mediums in my own art practice. I have a background teaching colour theory and mixing at tertiary level in Australia for over 28 years. The most effective way to understand colour mixing and application is by testing and observing and recording results. With each workshop, you may download exercises which accompany the video. Simply go to the links to download the exercise sheets and begin to explore the fascinating world of colour mixing and application. In this workshop, we look at how we prepare, prepare substrates for painting. There's a variety of surfaces, which are known as substrates, which may be used for painting on with Hydrocurl Acrylic Artist paints. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to prepare boards, canvas, canvas boards, and watercolor paper for painting onto. When we work on boards, there's a range of rigid boards that are available from hardware shops or wood suppliers. A board needs to be smooth and partially absorbent. Plywood, masonite or hardboard, marine ply and MDF are four substrates that I commonly use to paint onto. Masonite is this one here and you can see the back is quite rough so you always work on the smooth side. This is Lawan Pine. It's called Lawan Pine in Australia. It's just a, a fine plywood. And the one that I prefer the most is MDF. It's medium density fiberboard. It's easy to cut. I can cut it with my own jigsaw. Um, it comes in varying thicknesses and sizes. It's smooth, dense and stable. It's the same on both sides. If you're working with larger panels, they do need to be braced on the back to keep them flat um, so that they don't wobble. And MDF is relatively inexpensive, so it's a good board to, to learn on or to do quick sketches on as well. This MDF board has been cut to a particular size because I'm running a lot of color tests. So once you've cut them to the side, size you need, you need to just loosely sand them, particularly the edges that you cut. So I'm sanding with a, just with a sandpaper block and medium sandpaper. Once I've done that, I dust it off and I can actually um, begin to size it. When I'm sizing, I use a mixture of PVA glue, a third to a half, uh, and water. And I paint it on the lightly sanded board here. You need to paint it on both sides and on the end to prevent it from warping. So just a very light mixture of, of PVA glue. You can also use the uh, Hydrocryl um, Flow Enhancer to do this too. Um, so I've so sized it all on this side and then once it's dried I'll turn it over and size it on the other side. Once we've sized all our boards we actually need to paint them with acrylic gesso. This is called priming and generally I'll put three coats onto the surface and lightly sand in between coats and I find that to get the most flat even surface I paint one way let it dry really well, paint the opposite way, and then let it dry, sand it, and then the third layer. So we're just going to paint a layer on. This is just a standard white acrylic gesso, although gesso can come in a variety of colors. It can come in black and it can come in clear as well. Or you can add your hydrocurl paints um, to the gesso if you want uh, a... Um, prime surface that isn't white. 
So I find that very thin coats work best like that. And here's an example of one that I did earlier, quite a large one, with three coats on. So you can see that it's quite opaque and um, it's ready to be painted on too. If you've left it for a while, this one's been left for a few years and it's a bit grimy so I would tend to give it another coat before I paint it on it again just to make it receptive um, and I find that when I'm doing boards I prepare a lot of boards at one time and I wait for a really sunny day and do it outside and then they dry much more quickly. If you're painting onto stretched canvas you can purchase cotton and linen canvas of varying weights and width. It's usually available by the meter if you plan to stretch your own canvas. You'll need to use stretcher frames such as these and they just kind of clip together and the way, when you stretch the canvas over them and staple it on to the back, uh, the tension keeps it rigid. There's also little wooden plugs that go in here to keep it rigid. Um, what you also need if you're stretching canvas, so this is this is uh, proper canvas, cotton canvas. This is um, a textured cotton which once it's uh, primed will give you a slight texture whereas this is a little bit smoother. Um, when you're stretching canvas you need a stretcher tool to actually stretch the canvas and you work from the center out when you're stapling. So a staple gun such as this and a stretching tool are essential. It's an art form to get it stretched tightly um, and this is an example here of one that has been stretched. I've stretched this myself onto the um, the stretcher form and you can see the little tighteners or plugs here um, and I've stapled it again from the center out all the way around and that's relatively tight it's essential to get it tight when you use canvas it generally comes in two forms raw canvas like this it's got no priming no gesso on it at all um, but you can purchase it primed, which has the gesso on it already. I generally purchase it unprimed, um, and I prime it myself with gesso prior to beginning to paint. If I'm working on a purchased canvas that's been pre-primed, I'll still paint a few more layers of acrylic gesso onto the prime canvas prior to working on it and this allows me to control how smooth or rough I wish the surface to be for painting. So this is an example of a ready primed canvas that you can buy generally in art shops or hobby shops. There's the little plugs that go in after it's been primed. This is a primed canvas and I will usually gesso on top of it. Often I will draw and gesso with a clear gesso on top so I can see my drawn lines that I want to use as a starting point. If you work with raw canvas, especially linen, you'll need to seal the surface of the canvas to prevent paint from soaking into the canvas or into the fabric. So you can use clear gesso and that's good to use if you wish the raw canvas uh, base to paint onto. It seals without altering the color of the canvas. And you can see here that I've painted raw, the, the clear gesso onto a black surface, a colored surface, and a white surface. So it remains, it, it won't hide the surface underneath. It is a little bit cloudy, but it, it doesn't hide the surface. Um, underneath it doesn't alter it. Raw canvas used to be sized with rabbit skin glue prior to painting on the gesso ground but because you're using acrylic paints and gesso 
This practice is no longer required to prepare your canvas for painting. Canvas boards are another surface available to paint onto, and these may be purchased at art supply shops or hobby suppliers. They're ready prepared with a gesso, acrylic gesso as a white base, and I usually again add a couple more coats of gesso um, prior to painting as it adds tooth to the board. Um, so this is a raw, sorry this is a, a canvas board and here's one that's been painted on. I find that these are a bit floppy and they tend to bend um, and I enjoy making my own canvas boards so um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own canvas boards. Making your own canvas boards is easy. It's known as marouflaging, which I think is a French word. Um, and you make your own canvas board by covering the MDF or the plywood or masonite with PVA glue and laying down raw canvas or cotton duck over the glued board, ensuring the canvas is nice and flat. So this is an example of the canvas board that's not primed yet, glued onto the the MDF surface and you can see this is the back and that has been sized, the board was sized before I glued it on and I'm ready to glue around here. So just as an example, um, I'm going to just show you now one in process. I'll pop that one away and here we go. So I've got my MDF board. I've taken an amount of fabric that's larger so that I can actually, when the front is dry, the glue on the front is dry, I can fold it over beautifully onto the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is just use a mixture of 100% PVA, so I'm not using um, watered down PVA at all. And I'm going to paint it on the board that's already been sized with the um, diluted glue mixture on both sides and the, the edges. I'm going to get a good coating on there. Previously I would I usually iron the canvas or the cotton duck or whatever it is I'm doing using and I lay it down and press it and then just flip it and make sure it's flat like that. So once that is dry um, it'll provide a very stable surface, surface to work on. I'll fold the edges in once the front is dry and glue them on. So I fold the corners down like that and glue them and then I can do a neat tuck and glue that and sometimes I have to double brace that just by using masking tape until the glue is set. But that creates a very useful little board which is then ready to gesso and paint on. And this is a textured um, cotton that I'm using on this one. But you could use linen, you could use cotton duck or canvas. Another surface that's useful to work on, particularly if you're working out of doors or you just want to do a quick oil sketch, they're called oil sketches but actually you can do them with acrylics, is called oil paper. And these are heavy papers that are available in fine or coarse grades and they've been primed ready for painting. Here's some here. So they're useful for plein air, which is outdoor painting work. They're useful for quick sketches in acrylic. They're not suitable for larger works. I generally use them to test colors and layered effects on, um, and I just keep them on file. Um, often they'll come in like a watercolor pad, only it'll be an oil paper pad. So that's another surface that you could use. We're talking about watercolor paper as a, 
a base for using the hydrocryl acrylic uh, paints in diluted down for watercolor. So generally watercolor paper comes in a variety of sizes and weights. There's some rough and smooth and the rough um, the rough shows the texture um, and the smooth is for finer work. Uh, watercolor papers vary in quality depending on what the paper is made of. Um, so if it's 100% cotton rag it's usually a very good quality and also the thickness of the watercolor paper and the grade um, will determine how much you pay for a piece of watercolor paper. A good idea for watercolor I find is to actually um, glue it onto MDF board ahead of time. You could stretch the watercolor paper um, with the gum onto a, a board surface and let it dry and then work on it with the hydrocryl colors. But what I like to do is actually create a watercolor surface on the MDF board and uh, the way I do that is by getting the, my board, same as I did when I was using the, uh, uh, the canvas, um, and cutting the watercolor paper a little bit larger than the size of the board I'm gluing onto, um, uh, using 100% um, uh, PVA glue, in other words, not diluted down, coating the board the MDF board that's already been sized ahead of time and is dry, coat it with the glue, lay the watercolor paper down on it, so lay it like that if I'm doing that, and have a slightly larger edge there that I can trim off when the glue dries. It's also helpful when you're doing this sort of technique. Here's one where there's a watercolor work started on it and you can see it keeps the watercolor paper really stable. Um, you can get watercolor paper in books of various sizes um, or you can buy them as single sheets like this. So in summary hydrocolor, hydrocolor acrylic paints are suitable for all substrates but will vary in their appearance depending on the type of surface such as canvas, board, or watercolor paper and the surface quality of the substrate whether it's rough or smooth and the color of the surface the paint's applied to. So often you'll find that paint applied on a really white surface will be its brightest whereas if it's painted onto a colored surface it does tend to dull the paint down a little bit. Um, in the next two workshops we'll explore how we texture onto the surface prior to painting. So building up texture either by working directly on the surface or um, working by adding inert materials to the paint. And we'll also do a workshop on how we apply layers of colors the, the application of the paint and how to build up interesting color effects, color on color effects using that technique.